All right, that is a big rock for that machine. I think Brian has got it. All right, so here is our first attempt for a waterfall. <laughs> That's so dangerous. Yes, it is. Oh. Double brutal. Yeah, darn it. Didn't want that to happen. We're making great progress here on the pump reservoir. So there's a 3,000 gallon reservoir underneath all of this. There's a hundred of those aqua blocks creating a structural void space underneath all that boulder work. Now there's going to be the look of a riverbed coming through here. So we will have flowing water coming through. Now what we're doing is we're going to set our framing stone, which is this big guy over here. One of the biggest rocks that we have. It's going to sit right over here. It's going to anchor that waterfall. So we really need something solid and structural, but also we want that mass. We don't want to stack a bunch of small rocks on top of each other. All right, let's get that big rock in there. As you can see with waterfall rock placement a little bit slower than placing these boulders but it's because we need to get it right in the right position so one of the challenges that we were seeing was it was too lined up with everything and we kind of were breaking one of our own rules we were placing the rock according to the excavation up there so we need to just place the rocks where they look right and then change the elevation behind it to make it work <laughs> that way if it fell, it, it'll break the yeah. your brain would be all consolidated at one uh, spot. It, it would take the in the Careful! Careful! Oh, oh, oh just what a brutal. <laughs> Double brutal. Yeah, gosh, darn it. Didn't want that to happen. Second machine arrived, a little bit more horsepower on this one. That's gonna help us move some of these bigger boulders as well as shuffling stuff. So our challenge that we have here is working on this slope. We don't have easy access um, and it's difficult for the machines to go up and down constantly. So by having two machines going, we could have machines on the bottom setting stone and passing them up to the higher elevation. We also, the skid steer cannot go up this slope either without cutting in big pathways and things like that. So we think this is the easiest way to do it. We are making great progress so far on waterfall construction. Aqua boxes, remember we got that stuff done. Pump bolts are in place. Started setting all these beautiful rocks down on the bottom to frame everything out. Then we have this massive waterfall down over here on the bottom. Our next steps now are doing what we call wing walls. So wing walls are basically just these wings that kind of go off on either side of the waterfall. It's going to help to stabilize the slope as well as kind of tie some of that stonework horizontally along the face of that slope. So that's going to give us a better aesthetic appeal to it. It's going to look a little bit more naturalistic and then it's also going to create a series of planting pockets in and around all those different boulders. So we're going to work our way this way for a little bit, climb up on top, come back over here, knock this down, do some of that stonework on that side and then start cutting out more of this section in the middle where that middle pool is going to be located. Tough 
pulling rocks around to give us more access, but it's also allowing us more access to the stone from a picking standpoint. So before they were just all in a big mass over here, it's very difficult for us to access them. So now we're able to just kind of spread them out a little bit to find the ones that we need. So whenever we're designing and building, we're always picking and choosing the right stones. Brian started off right away this morning. We have that main waterfall completed, starting up on the second waterfall up. What we don't want to do, and again, this is a little bit of a challenge that we have, when you're designing and building a, a long waterfall system, you don't want it to go from point A to point B quickly. Sometimes that works, and that's if you have a really, really steep slope. If the slope is really steep, the water's going to want to take the path of least resistance, gravity's going to take hold, and it's going to come straight down a hill. But with this, you can see there's a series of ledges and terraces. It's a gentle slope, so what's going to happen in this type of a situation, we want to have kind of a little bit of a meander to it. So what we'll do is we'll place large boulders into the hillside because when you go out into nature and you look at waterfalls, the, the moving water is going to change its course. When it hits an object, it cannot move. And that's going to be a massive, what we call our frame rock. So that's going to twist and turn that course of water. So what we're going to do here is we want to kind of get a waterfall coming in from a completely different angle. This waterfall is facing almost dead on perfectly towards the home. The next one, we want to angle more towards master bedroom so again it's going to be subtle little things like that that are going to make all the difference in the world for this project started setting some of our big boulders down in here there's ed giving some scale to the height of this waterfall but that's about a five foot drop right there and then we're going to continue to move up this hill so we've got our big frame rock there we've got mark aj ed pulling the straps out we'll get this drop kind of falling off on the side and then we'll rip through here and kind of have this stream look or eventually a dry stream bed that runs off that there now you can kind of see my face there's my eyes up here <laughs> it's day three out here and I don't know why but both Ed and I were saying we felt a little off yesterday today's got a weird energy about it and it's just feeling like we're gonna accomplish a lot I think it has something to do with the wind not whistling through here all day long it was like a dust storm all day you can only imagine what came out of this area <laughs> So we got quite a bit done yesterday. I want to turn around, but more importantly, I want to show you where Ed and AJ are at and what they're doing up there and why they're doing that. Well, you can see down here, we set quite a few rocks. We got about 20 some boulders set between outcroppings in here and this area in here. The one thing I really want you to focus on in this space is how we changed a 15 by 13 foot area of aqua box down to make it look like a stream. And the trick I always do is actually mark it out. So if I think about the way I want that water to come off the waterfall and then how I want it to move across the aqua block. What I'll do is actually paint out the course of the water. And you can see the orange mark there. Kind of see the remains of the orange mark back over in here. And then with that much real estate, we have ample amount of room just to kind of set the rock from the outside of there. So when this drops through where Mark's at, that water will move through here, move through here. We'll just do some like landslide areas. And then over the top of the aqua block, we'll actually do a bib liner, allowing that water to carry all the way to here, which will then move into a dry stream bed. That moves off that way. Ed's up here and rather than me explain it, let's let the professor explain it himself. Good morning, Kyle. Good morning. Good morning, AJ. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Morning. The Utah Pond guy. The, the Utah Pond guy. <laughs> 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 so we've dug all this out. We came in here this morning, dug it out a little bit more to kind of change the shape of the way we wanted that waterfall to come in. But then when we put the liner down, we realized this edge was slightly above this rock here. So what would happen 
happen is if we didn't put these rocks in on the side, all the river rock and stuff is gonna get washed off and it's gonna expose this line or edge over here. So what we're trying to do is kind of create a little bit of a pooling area. So we're gonna have 18, 20,000 gallons per hour coming through all this. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna choke this down a little bit, get some smaller rocks in here to kind of create a little bit, four to six inch pool in here. What that does, what I love about that, when you get that kind of that back welling of all that water kind of builds itself up and then it's gonna blast through this joint. So with this rock, it's not perfectly level. So there's a little bit of a hump right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build up this side, this side, have a little bit lower in between and that's gonna have all that water blast through this one spot. But because this is slightly higher, it's gonna kind of shoot off of here, but it's gonna split the water and really fill out that entire waterfall. What I love about this, it's gonna create that more naturalistic look because when you're walking around the lakes, rivers and streams and all that stuff, that's exactly what you're gonna find happening. You're gonna find boulders shoved in different areas. You're gonna have little narrow gorges of water kind of blasting through and then you have these big wide open falls. What I like about that, the sight, the sound, all that stuff working together creates the desired look. <laughs> so awesome. I think this is why we still enjoy doing this because we knew this rock, it almost kind of has this like bell on the top. So like I said, there's a high point here. So water is going to come here. A lot will come over in here then bounce in through this. And the reason we like doing this so much is we're pretending we're the water and when we turn this on, it's still the most exciting part just to see if what is, what, how do you explain it? I don't know. What yeah, did I alluvial. Say? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to hopefully choke through here, push a lot of it right off the center and then it'll, the water will decide if it wants to go this way and this way. So it should actually help spread that water out over the whole thing. And we won't know until we turn it on. But in theory, it all makes sense. In theory, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> so now what we got to do is we're going to finish foaming all this stuff. So the other thing from a waterfall construction standpoint is we got these big giant boulders. The excavation was way back here. So this big joint behind it is filled with crushed stone. Water is going to easily flow through all that stuff. So what we're doing is we're putting the rubber liner over it. That's going to stop the water from going directly through. But these little joints right here on the edge, that's where we're going to use our waterfall foam. We'll kind of foam all that stuff in place to force all of that water going over the top of the waterfall. And that's the key. You know, so this is obviously going to be the focal waterfall right in here. The reason we dug out more back in there, the way it was originally dug, that next waterfall was going to drop over in here. We really wanted to drop kind of like yeah, really on a 45 back. off on this way, so everything's not straight up and down. So we dug out more back in here, giving us more real estate for the boulders to sit here. We'll get another one where Ed just was. That'll be the spillstone, and then a giant one probably back over in there and then just some wing walls in here. So today's goal, we should easily get that waterfall done. We'll probably set a couple more boulders in this area here, and then hopefully get up into that next area, dig out a shallow pond. We wanna to try to create a little bit of a pool area, just like you see in nature. It's not always just big falls, big falls, big falls. Sometimes a big fall drops into a shallow pool, and that pool can be 12 inches deep. It could be three feet deep. We probably won't go three feet deep, somewhere around 12 to 18 inches deep up in here. So that's the goal today. We'll see how far we get.